We have discussed Banker's algorithm and how to avoid deadlock using Banker's algorithm. Next we shall discuss what is resource allocation graph, the types of resource allocation graph and how to describe deadlock using resource allocation graph. And then we will see how to avoid deadlock using resource allocation graph. Resource allocation graph is a directed graph with a set of vertices and set of edges. And these vertices can be of two types, the processes represented by circles and resources represented by squares. These resources can be single instance resources or multi instance resources. For example, if we have a single printer, one printer, then we can say we have a single instance of the resource type printer. And if we have three printers, we can say we have three instances or multiple instances of the resource type printer. So based on it, resource allocation graph can be single instance resource allocation graph or multi instance resource allocation graph. In single instance resource allocation graph, all the resources are of single instance. And the single instance resources are represented by a single dot within the square representing the resource. Now the edges can be of two types, request edge or assignment edge. If a process is requesting for some resource, the request edge points from the circle representing the process to the box representing the resource. And if some resource is already assigned to a process or already allocated to a process, then the assignment edge or the allocation edge points from the dot within the square representing the resource to the circle representing the process. So the request edge points from the process to the resource and the assignment edge points from the resource to the process. Here the process is requesting for the resource. Here the resource is already allocated to the process. So by using a resource allocation graph, we will be able to represent the state of a system. Here we can see there are three processes P1, P2 and P3. There are four resources R1, R2, R3 and R4. All are single instance resources and P1 is requesting for the resource R1 and R1 is allocated to P2. P2 is requesting for R2 and R2 is allocated to P3. P3 is requesting for R3, R3 is allocated to P1. So by analyzing this kind of simple graph, we people can easily identify whether a deadlock exits in this system or not. Here we can see P1 is waiting for R1 to be released by P2. P2 is waiting for R2 to be released by P3. P3 is waiting for R3 to be released by P1. So we have three processes P1, P2 and P3 in this set. Each process is waiting for another process in this set for an event to be caused by that process. As a result, all the processes are blocked. None of the processes can proceed. All the processes are blocked for an infinite amount of time, leading to a state of deadlock. So here by observing this graph, we can identify a deadlock state. And even if the graph is complex, similar to the matrices and vectors methods that we discussed in Banger's algorithm, we will be able to easily identify what is the state of the system. Here we have three processes, P1, P2, P3, four resources, R1, R2, R3 and R4. Some resources are already allocated and some resources are now requested for. So we can use one allocation matrix and one request matrix. P1 is allocated with one instance of R1, 
and is waiting for one in, one instance of r3 and is waiting for one instance of r1 p2 is allocated with one instance of r1 and is waiting for one instance of r2 p3 is allocated with one instance of r2 and is waiting for one instance of r3 so all the other entries are zeros now how many resources are available with us we have one instance of r4 available so available vector is 0, 0, 0, 0001 now see whether with these available resources we are able to execute all these three processes in any sequence. Can we execute P1 now? No, because one instance of R1 is not available. Can we execute P2 now? No, P2 needs one instance of R2. Can we execute P3 now? P3 needs one instance of R3, so it's not possible. So we cannot find any possible sequence or any safe sequence by which all these three processes can be executed. So definitely this is an unsafe state. Not only that, here all these three processes have made a single request and none of these requests can be satisfied. It means all these processes are blocked for infinite amount of time. None of them can make progress and we can't release any other resources too. So definitely this is a deadlock state too. So either by observing the resource allocation graph or by constructing the matrices and vectors corresponding to this graph, we people can identify whether there is a deadlock state or not. But from system point of view, from a resource allocation graph, with a resource single instance resource allocation graph, how the system can identify whether there is a state of deadlock or not. We know that if deadlock is present, then four necessary conditions will be present there. If there is deadlock, then there will be mutual exclusion, no preemption, circular weight and hold and weight. So, Circular weight is a necessary condition for deadlock. If there is deadlock, circular weight will be present there. Here there is deadlock and here we can see a circular weight. And if there is circular weight, in the corresponding graph there will be a cycle. So circular weight is a necessary condition for deadlock and hence a cycle in the corresponding resource allocation graph is a necessary condition for deadlock. We are now discussing about single instance resource allocation graph. We will discuss the case with multi instance resource allocation graph in the next video. So in a single instance resource allocation graph, if deadlock is present, a cycle will be present in that graph. But can we say that if a cycle is present in the resource allocation graph, then there will be definitely deadlock. Here there is cycle in the graph and there is deadlock. Now consider a graph without cycle. Suppose here P3 is waiting for the resource R4. We can first use this matrix and vector methods to find out whether there is deadlock or not. Here P3 is now waiting for R4 instead of R3. R4 is not assigned to anyone so the available vector is the same. Now with these available resources will we be able to execute all these three processes in some possible sequence. We cannot execute P1, we cannot execute P2 but we can execute P3. One instance of R4 is available. So if we execute P3 then the resources held by P3 will be released so one instance of r2 will be added to the available resources so the new available resources will become 0 1 0 1 and with these available resources can we execute any other process we can't execute p1 but we can execute p2 when we execute p2 the resource r1 will also be added to the available resources so the new available vector becomes 1101 and with these available resources we can execute P1. 
It means we can execute all the three processes in the sequence P3, P2, P1. We found a safe sequence. So this is a safe state and the processes are not blocked for an infinite amount of time. So definitely this is a no deadlock state. And in a safe state, there will be no deadlock too. So this is a no deadlock state. And so by observing this graph, we can find out that resource R4 is free. So if it is assigned to P3, P3 can complete with R2 and R4. When P3 completes the execution, R2 will be released. It can be assigned to P2. Now P2 can complete the execution with R1 and R2. After completion, R1 will be released. It can be assigned to P1. Now P1 can complete the execution with R1 and R3. So by both the methods, we found that no deadlock exits in the system and also there is no cycle in the graph. So in the earlier case, there was cycle and we found deadlock and when there is no cycle, here there is no cycle and there is no deadlock. Similarly, if we consider any single instance resource allocation graph, we can find that if there is cycle in the graph, the system will be in a deadlock state. It means the cycle in the resource allocation graph is a sufficient condition for deadlock. To generalize, in a single instance resource allocation graph, a cycle is a necessary condition for deadlock and also a sufficient condition for deadlock. Necessary condition for deadlock means if there is deadlock, a cycle will be visible in that graph. Sufficient condition means if there is cycle in the graph, then there is deadlock. If there is cycle in the graph, in the single instance resource allocation graph, then that is sufficient. We need not check for any other condition. A deadlock will be present there. With this piece of information, system can take proper measures against deadlock. So in the next video, we shall see how to describe deadlock using multi-instance resource allocation graph.